Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage View Lab. In the lab today, we received a, uh, a package, actually two, from uh, Data On. Now, we've worked with Data On quite a bit over the, gosh, the last year, year and a half on Windows Azure Stack HCI. Uh, before, we took a look at their four node cluster with domain controller, redundant switches for Mellanox, all that sort of stuff. And that's really great if you need a high performance cluster at the core, of course, they make disk and hybrid and other things that are uh, a little more modest. Our build was all NVMe. Now, speaking of more modest, this guy is the uh, Kepler 47 G2. Well, this is one of them, the other one's on the floor. And what these Kepler 47 G2s are all about is, well, the two, the G2, meaning data on second swing at making a two node HCI cluster specific for remote office, branch office, small office, you know, all those uh, little office deployments where you want the capabilities of a real HCI solution, you want good hardware, uh, but you also want to manage cost. So this is a balance of capabilities, performance, cost, and then of course the ability to connect out to Microsoft Azure if you want additional cloud services like uh, Azure Site Recovery or Backup or other things like that. So. Actually, so we get the full double mint gum moment. Let's pull this guy up. Gosh, it's been a while since I've seen those uh, commercials with twins on them, and most young people probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Back in the day, we used to chew bubble gum, and it had sugar in it. I know it's horrible to think of now, but uh, uh, they had twins in all the commercials. Anyway, uh, speaking of twins, we've got uh, these two units. We've got the Intel Xeon. E2278G CPUs, uh, looks like 64 gig of RAM if I can count right, Intel S3110 uh, SSD for boot, some Intel S4510 SSDs for capacity, so we're all flashing this, which is great to see, um, and then we've got some Mellanox Connect X4 for 25 gig networking. Now, one of the neat things about the way this can be set up, it is in a small office, they can be set up uh, switchless, connected, direct connect, which is kind of cool. Uh, Data On's also done versions in the past that can use Thunderbolt 3 to connect, which is another uh, inexpensive way to make that happen if you don't want the weight of a switch in between. We'll probably do a, a couple of different things once we get them operational here in the lab. Kevin's wizardry knows no bounds and is never confined to the lack of a switch, so we'll see what he does with that. For now, let's resort to our trusty box knife and pop one of these guys out or both of them and see what we're dealing with. Now we do know, and if you listen to the podcast on Friday, and if you're not listening to the podcast on Fridays, then you have a new to-do uh, item. I had Howard Lowe on who uh, is with Data On and we talked quite a bit about these boxes because for our storage review audience, as soon as we pop one of these out, you're gonna say, hey, that looks familiar, and it looks a lot like a NAS. And it does look a lot like a NAS, and that's for good reason. Let's pause that conversation for a second while I get this guy out. All right. Okay, set that off to the side. It comes with a power cable, a, uh, a networking cable. Let me get at the body of this guy, unbag it. All right, so if we take a look at it, the front of it, it does, it looks a lot like a NAS. It looks specifically like a QNAP NAS, and that's what this chassis is. And when I talked to Howard, we talked about this specifically, and he felt like that the engineering that QNAP had done in this small body and the experience they had with Intel Xeon CPUs made it a great combination to be able to load on um, Windows and the full Azure Stack HCI uh, software across the two units and then uh, have the connectivity in the back. But anyway, they start out with a nice hardened chassis that's well understood. It's got their nice uh, applique uh, logo and branding on the side and We've got uh, the 25 gig cards in the system, which is great. Plenty of other connectivity across the back of it. We're not going to be super worried about all of that, though, because most of this is going to be administered through um, 
connecting into the Azure Stack HCI interface and to the um, data on using their must tools. All right, so let's take a look inside and see uh, what we've got going on. I don't know exactly where they've tucked these drives away. All right, well, there's one. That's an Intel uh, 4510 1.92 terabyte. So they must have used these two. Yep, there's another 4510. And let's see where the other, that guy's empty. All right, so that means, here we go. There's one and one more. Here. All right, so we found our SSDs. They've opted to use the two uh, two and a half inch bays, which is fine. That gives the uh, user the ability to do a little RAID 1 over here, put a couple, I don't know, 4, 8, 10 terabyte, whatever you want drives in here on the hard drive side, if you want, and have just another pool for capacity. It might be good for a file share if it's a, you know, in a small office environment. So there's some capabilities there. Why don't we do this? I'll go ahead and get this guy out and get the, uh, get the twins together, and then uh, we'll go ahead and take the lid off of this one and, uh, and see what they've done inside. All right, so we've pulled in a little closer on our data on double mint. I'm gonna call it that now instead of the Kepler 47G2. The Kepler probably means some star cluster or satellite or some other spatial nonsense. Data on double mint is definitely what this thing should have been called. Uh, we took a quick look at the back when uh, we were spinning it around before, but again, we've got our NIC here, VGA, plenty of uh, other access ports uh, on the system. Unfortunately, they've blanked out these guys. Those are um, AV ports, which you don't really need in this cluster, but uh, you know that's okay. I think what would be neat, what Dataon needs to get on the, for the double mint would be a um, like a, a dumbbell holder here so you could walk around with both of them at once that'd be pretty slick or maybe a large picnic basket uh, for taking your your double mints out to the park but anyway let's go ahead and take a look inside here because we know that there's a boot drive stowed away in here uh, in addition to some ram and the uh, the intel cpu but just to get a better idea for what the layout is of this board is as we've started to look at this and think about what, what else we've seen from QNAP. This is a little bit more of an elongated chassis than we're used to seeing from their NAS products. So let's go ahead and pull that, scoot this out of the way, and then go sideways here, because this is where all the goodies are. Uh, we've got a power supply on the back and the, uh, uh, the, the two and a half inch bays and the ConnectX four 25 gig card from Mellanox uh, on that back PCIe slot. Now coming around the front here, of course, we've got the Intel CPU under here, and it looks like that's probably an IPMI, yeah, IPMI card there uh, for systems management. Let's go ahead and get this fan out of the way. Now this guy's held in with a single screw, and if we just pull these little power cables, it's got a release and will fall away. Perfect. So we'll set that off to the side. Now, once we're inside here, we can see the rest of the components. The RAM, as I might have said at the beginning, I believe those are uh, eight gig sticks, so we should have 64. And then we've got an Intel um, boot drive here for uh, you know booting up the system, and getting it operational. So all in all, we've got a nice all flash configuration with two more three and a half inch bays available for expansion if you want, or these could be configured with all the way with flash, or they could be configured with uh, mostly uh, hard drives or in hybrid. There's all sorts of ways to do this. Data on is talking uh, about a starting price point of under 10 K for this, for a variety of configurations. Uh, so not just, not this for the whole, the whole uh, double mint cluster and uh, what that'll that'll get you uh, a lot of flexibility in terms of what you configure putting these at the uh, at the edge in a small office all the microsoft goodness that's easy to manage and deploy all the performance that's available to you even with a modest configuration like this we should see some uh, some pretty good io to the system uh, at this point i suspect i should probably put this back together uh, hand it off to Kevin and see what he can do with it. But uh, we'll be talking more about this as we uh, get closer to the review and uh, check back on storageview.com in a couple weeks for the full review. We're looking forward to it and uh, excited to see another option for uh, HCI at the Edge.
Thanks for tuning in.